drives people to tour the North? Is it campaigns for marine mammal conservation? Stunning wide lens camera footage from professionals at places like the Discovery Channel? A trip to the aquarium to see the polar bears? Friends reports that there were so many whales that their kids could take decent pictures with a Nintendo DS? Movies like Free Willy and Blackfish changing opinions about places like SeaWorld? What happens when the romantic notions of frolicking whales and romping polar bear pups are replaced with cold, wet days of unbroken gray fog across land and sea? Or when your bird safari ends in a thousand pictures of guano-stained rocks but not a bird in sight? It is not always clear up front what the trade-offs for an authentic wild experience in the North might be versus armchair television voyeurism or a quality zoo. Generally though, one can say that the more authentic the experience, the more variable and potentially uncomfortable and inconvenient it will be. There is a much smaller chance of success in the hunt for a big bear sighting in the Alaskan or Canadian wilderness than at Disney's Animal Kingdom, but a much higher one of having such a bear eat its way through your camping supplies. Expensive outlays to see and experience the wild north may result in highly risky behavior by tourists and tour providers alike, with potentially deadly consequences to both humans and wildlife. Infrastructure, safety and security, and opportunity must come together successfully to lower this variability. Timing is also important. The traditional tourist seasons in the north are short, limited by light and temperature, just as they are for the many migratory species who visit and which the tourists would like to see and interact with. This may create physical bottlenecks in migratory pathways or promote other dangerous tourist behavior, especially as tourist numbers increase. Kellen? No. Why? While many components of northern tourism are non-consumptive use of renewable resources, taking mainly pictures and memories away, the lessons of overharvesting still pertain as tourism numbers create congestion and reduce habitat fitness. This is especially true if and when tourism cannot be linked to the whole ecosystem and is focused only on charismatic megafauna, for example. To get the right scale and scope for northern tourism, whether in the wild or at the zoo, that balances authenticity with accessibility, ecosystem management must apply to the tourism activities as well as other wildlife conservation measures.